Then that start, although we will not finish it today, the next section. And let's, let's just recall some definitions. A linear one-to-one onto transformation is an isomorphism. And our our intuition here should be that from a vector space point of view isomorphic Spaces are identical. So, just reciting the first example that springs to my mind, two isomorphic vector spaces must have the same dimension. That's a vector space property, so it has to be shared among isomorphic vector spaces. Let me state, since I used the word dimension, let me state a theorem. Any N dimensional vector space is isomorphic to R. And that's, um, that's a really nice result, because we know how to work in Rn. We know how to solve equations and perform Gauss-Jordan elimination, find bases, determine if stuff is linearly independent, do all of that good stuff. And what this is saying then, because isomorphic spaces are identical, is that if we have any n-dimensional vector space, we can think of it as just being Rn, and we can study it using the tools of Rn. There was something sort of, well, not exactly like this on the test, but you know, I think it was the Shebushev or polynomials or something. If you want to know whether a set of polynomials is linearly dependent or linearly independent, you can think of them as vectors in Rn, and you can determine if those vectors are dependent or independent. So this is a really nice result. It has a quick corollary, by the way, that any two n-dimensional vector spaces 
are isomorphic to each other. And even without a formal proof, the intuition should be clear here. Isomorphic spaces are identical. Um, if two spaces are both identical to Rn, they are also identical to each other. Incidentally, I don't know if this is obvious to you. It, there, I guess there's no reason it should be, but the proof of this is like one line. Suppose you have a vector space V, it has a basis B, then the mapping that sends V to its coordinate vector with respect to that basis is an isomorphism. We've already stated that coordinate mappings are isomorphisms. This is a coordinate mapping from V to Rn. So, this section then sort of seeks to kind of drill home or drill down on this theorem. So, for example, suppose you have a vector space V and a vector space W, and we have a linear transformation from V to W. And suppose that V is n dimensional and W is m dimensional. Well, if V is n-dimensional, then V is really just Rn. I mean, the vectors may be written a little differently, but those vector spaces are identical. And if W is M dimensional, then this vector space is identical to Rm. The vectors, again, may be written differently, but they're the same vector space. So this linear transformation from V to W should be identical to a linear transformation from Rn to Rm. I mean, if these top, if these vector spaces are the same, and these vector spaces are the same. How could you have a linear transformation from a V to W, but then you have this space that's identical to V, and you have this space that's identical to W, and you don't have the transformation? That wouldn't make any sense. So, There ought to be a linear transformation from Rn to Rm that corresponds in some way to the linear transformation from V to W. To see how this works, it might be easier to think about individual vectors. 
vectors. You've got a vector v, and you've got a linear transformation. So v is being sent to a t of v. This isomorphism, the reason that v and rn are identical, is this coordinate mapping. So v is identical to the coordinate mapping of v with respect to some basis, call it to be. Likewise, W has some basis, call it C. T of V is identical to the coordinate mapping of T of V with respect to C. And when we have this much of the diagram, it's probably pretty intuitive what this linear transformation should be doing. This linear transformation should take the coordinate vector of V with respect to that basis, and it should map it to the coordinate vector of T of V with respect to that other basis, C. Everybody buying this so far? I mean, we haven't given a formal proof of anything, but I hope this is pretty intuitive. So I am sort of claiming that the transformation that sends this coordinate vector to this coordinate vector is linear. And we know how linear mappings from Rn to Rm work, as it were. Linear transformations are the same as matrix multiplication from Rn to Rm. This is now going back quite a ways. This was like section 1.11 or 1.12 or something like that. But if this transformation is linear, there should exist an M, a matrix M, such that T of X is M times X. And I guess for the for this class period, I'll just state what this M is. Um, we could prove this more formally, but the proof is, in my opinion, kind of ugly and ultimately not very rewarding. I'm just going to tell you that M is, and here's where we start to suffer for using these square brackets to represent like five different things. M is a matrix. So its first column 
is the coordinate vector of B sub 1 with respect to C. And just so we're very clear, I mean, we've already identified B as being the basis of V. You could maybe intuit what B1 and so on are, but let's make this explicit. The B's that are appearing in this definition are the basis vectors of V. So T of B1 with respect to C, and at this point you can maybe guess what the rest of the columns are going to be. T of B2 with respect to C, and so on, down the line. And this is the matrix of T relative to these bases B and C. The most significant example of this, and I think this is a sensible place to end for the day, but the most significant example of this are when the vector space V and W are the same. So you've got one vector space, but you want to look at it um, using two different bases. And we'll talk about that and why it's important and interesting to do on Thursday. We, um, we, of course, this class wouldn't meet tomorrow anyway, but I hope you enjoy your day off.